Some watches come and go. You see them in the store and think they're amazing. You buy some of them and then comes the inevitable buyer's remorse. The disappointments, the criticisms, and ultimately you end up getting rid of them. The Tudor Black Bay GMT is not one of those watches for me. To me, it's something special, it's something different, and a more focused watch that many of the other Tudor offerings aren't. I've criticized Tudor a fair bit for not being particularly daring. They are, in my opinion, producers of very attractive, but also broadly appealing watches. And right now, much like AP, they're a bit of a one-trick pony. Since the series of watches that does all the heavy lifting is the Black Bay, and to some extent the Pelagos, which is essentially the Black Bay Diver or the AP Royal Oak Offshore. But just because they're broadly appealing doesn't mean they're not attractive. On the contrary, the Black Bays are almost universally stunning. The 58 in multiple colors, the Pro, the silver, the bronze, the 36 millimeter Black Bay. My favorite though is the Pepsi GMT and in many ways their most daring watch. I like it so much that it's part of my personal collection. Let's talk about why. The movement. I was one of the lucky individuals that had one of the very first movements of the GMT with the MT5652 movement. So I was in the lucky position of being one of those owners that had a date wheel that got stuck due to a production fault or a defect in the manufacturing and assembly process. I know that's a weird place to start when we're talking about a good watch that I really enjoy, but to me it just goes to show that having an in-house movement is not necessarily a guarantee of better finishing, accuracy, or in this specific instance, quality. You get 70 hours of power reserve and of course the GMT function where the GMT hand moves independently and the date shifts whenever the GMT hand passes the 24 hour position or rather after 24 hours. It's a good movement. I've had it for a couple of years. It's accurate. It works. Happy me. The design. You've got a 41 millimeter case with a 14.7 millimeter thickness and a 50 millimeter lug to lug. These are super proportions, which to me are way more important than the size in isolation. The Black Bay Pro is lopsided because of the almost same thickness coupled with a smaller case. At 50 millimeters, it is on the above average size, but absolutely doable for a lot of people. The case overall is more rugged and an industrial take on the classic oyster style case. From the side, you have these highly polished flanks and a thin polished beveling on the side of the flanks. The sides are slab sided, which some don't appreciate as the watch becomes more chunky. Personally though, I think it helps to put this watch in a more rugged outdoorsy category. Think um, James Bond instead of James Bond. From above, the lugs are matte brushed. There are no crown guards, which helps slim down the case. The bracelet is the Oyster S steel bracelet. It's excellent quality. You only get a three position manual adjustment though, which is a bit of a downer. I personally vacillate between months of going to the gym or months of running. I seldom do both at the same time. That means I can be between 10 and 15 pounds lighter or heavier, depending on what exercise I enjoy at the time. And three adjustments is typically not enough. It's a niche problem, yeah. But for me, it's a thing. I have zero problem with the faux rivets. I barely ever notice them but the slight recesses on the end links add to this tool aesthetic that I really like. I do have two gripes about the bracelet though, and that is, at least on my model, the bracelet is not flush with the legs. There is a small indentation which irritates me, but in fairness, lots of producers fail at this even with fully integrated bracelets. It's not something you see as much as you feel when you run your hand over the legs and the bracelet end links. Secondly, the matte brushing on the bracelet is not identical to the case. The bracelet looks shinier. It's not a lot, but I can see the difference. And to me, it sometimes makes me think of the bracelet as an aftermarket copy that approximates the matte brushing of the case. Again, it's not huge, but when you've had the watch for a while, you do notice. Then you have the bezel and dial. The bezel is this two-tone deep burgundy and dark navy 24-hour bezel. This is nothing at all like a Rolex Pepsi. I say this because so many people will say that Tudor is the poor man's Rolex, and that may very well be, but this watch is not an homage. This bezel combined with a fairly low texture matte black dial with white plots and markers, railroad minutes, white snowflake hands, and red GMT hand make again for this more rugged GMT aesthetic. All of this sits under a crystal that does not sit flush with the bezel. It's weird, but there's something very tactile about running your hand from the fine fluting of the bezel over the bezel and then that little crystal lip. Why do I love it so much? The reason the Speedmaster is so very popular is partly because of its versatility and wearability. A simple black dial with white text, numerals, and markings is a versatility chameleon. You can throw on an alligator leather strap and you have something that works with formal wear. Rubber strap in multiple colors and you're going to the beach, the cocktail bar, or off to your yacht somewhere in the Mediterranean. Throw on a camo NATO and the Speedmaster becomes a rugged, almost field watch kind of watch. 
The same goes for the Pelagos. It's easy, unassuming, and effortlessly versatile. My wife sometimes compares the Pelagos and the Moonwatch to the classic little back dress immortalized by Coco Chanel. It can be styled in any direction for any occasion. This brings me to the reason why I've had a Black Bay 36 but sold it. I've had a Black Bay Black ETA and sold it. I loaned a BB Pro but I never ended up buying it. This GMT though has been in the collection since May 2020 because it precisely isn't almost as universally versatile. Now, personally, I don't have one style of clothing I wear. In the office, I'm more often than not in some version of a suit. Sometimes a tie, but not often. I have my fair share of black, gray, and navy suits. And then, the rest of the time, it's blue jeans and a t-shirt, sneakers, or boots. Bomber jacket, hoodie, aviator, or yet another wax jacket. The first scenario with a suit is the situation dictating my clothing. The last scenario is where I choose based much more on my personal preference than based on practical or situational considerations. When I'm not in a suit, I want to feel like I'm out of the office. So, a Zeitwerk, not that I own one, I don't, would find its way onto my wrist when wearing a suit, but not when not. It wouldn't carry over to my spare time. For the same reason, a Pelagos that works everywhere would just end up being too versatile. A watch that I can wear on a suit effortlessly and then also in my free time or my spare time becomes boring for me. So it's too useful. I mean, why wear a watch out of the office that reminds me of being in the office? Now, I've said that this watch wears rugged. I liken it to saying that a Rolex Pepsi is for the Airbus pilot and this one is for the Hercules pilot. This watch leans rugged, but here's the thing. Within the confines of the rugged aesthetic space, you can, and I do, style it. Burgundy alligator strap and I feel like a Texas oil tycoon millionaire straight out of a pickup truck and into the boardroom. Stetson and all. Pearl on navy for the yacht? You can do that. Still rugged. Still the outside on that boat where everybody else is either wearing a Pepsi, an Aquanaut or a Royal Oak. Or you leave it on the bracelet with a hoodie and you're just a no-nonsense practical kind of guy. The Pepsi feels at home under a suit and white cuff. The Tudor feels like it could belong but doesn't want to. I like that feeling. I like that feeling of being the outsider. This ended up being sort of a long-winded way of saying this is the average Joe's watch for an average Joe that wants to stick out just a little bit. At that price point, it's not exactly working class, but it feels it. It exudes it. It's the kind of watch my dad would respect, and he walked 20 miles to school, uphill both ways. Which brings me to the competition. An Aquaterra wears more or less the same like a Datejust. They work in the same environment, more or less at least. The glass suit CQ in 38mm does a lot of what a colorful BB-852 will do stylistically. A lot of brands deliberately inhabit the same space as others. That's not quite the case in the GMT space. Case in point. You would think that the Rolex is the natural upgrade path to the Tudor. At least you would think so. But Tudor and Rolex have clearly had a little conversation and although they are both steel Pepsis, they inhabit very distinct spaces. The Rolex is more luxurious, more eye-catching, far more pang, boom, pow in the colorway and ultimately a far more eye-catching watch. It's so luxury that it wears better on a black suit than a Tudor simply because of the high polish, the ceramic bezel and the more saturated colors. So the Pepsi is not an alternative in terms of wearing experience. It's decidedly more flashy, formal, classy which is cool, but don't believe that it will provide the same aesthetic wearing experience at all. Then you have something like the Longines Spirit Zulu Time. You can get this in three different colorways where the pure black is infinitely more versatile than the Tudor, like a Pelagos. A green, which leans more towards the khaki Fjellroan aesthetic that is the more outdoorsy type of thing. And then blue, which is blue jeans and a t-shirt all the way. I dig the Longines, but the dials come off as a little busy and try hard compared to the Tudor. It's not bad, but not their strongest attribute. There's also the Norcane, a Boulevard, a Ferrer, a Bugari, a Bremont, a Serica, a Baltic, a Christopher Ward, a Bella Ross, and a Black Bay Pro, and many more. Stylistically, they are all very specific. Some lean formal, some lean very tall. Some are quirky, others are bland. To me though, few succeed at landing precisely in the stylistic space that the Tudor does, and that's why I like it. This space, specifically, is where I want this watch to be. It works for me. It's working class secret agent. It's special. Will it work for you? Maybe not. Maybe you want the more pure outdoorsiness of an Explorer 2 Polar. Maybe you want the upscale look of the Pepsi from Rolex or a more engineered, faceted and futuristic look of a Grand Seiko. But if your use case, your style, your fit screams for a fitting working man's GMT of the Tudor nature, then the Tudor is head and shoulders above the rest. And that's why it's in my collection. Having said that, what do you think about the Tudor Black Bay GMT? Always let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe.
Tschüss.